What's going on, y'all? It's Ben from Pitch Black Forge. Once again, I think this is volume four of my Riding Freight Trains, Living in the Rough uh, Tips and Tricks series. Uh, today, I'm gonna cover something really, really fundamental, which is staying dry. Uh, it can be pretty difficult when you're on an open top moving freight train out in the elements. Um, I know a lot of folks will, will only ride when, there's, when it's fair weather. Um, they only ride to get good photos, so they're riding during the daytime when the sun is out, it's not raining or snowing or sleeting or hailing, but uh, that's not always possible. And some folks end up living on the road and making a life out of this. This is a, a method that I've used a lot over the years to, to stay dry, especially in the back of container cars on grainers as well, which uh, have a little bit of cover, but the back of a intermodal, you're, you're pretty wide open. There's uh, the container will, will block some of the wind and rain, but there's, there's still gonna be a lot, of, a lot of water coming down on you. So the, the elements of this system are really simple. I use an old uh, military issue poncho. This thing is ancient. Um, this is not the current issue one. This is rubberized canvas. I think it's from the Vietnam era. It was given to me by a dude with FTRA tattooed on his knuckles, if you know what that means. Uh, so that was, that was some time ago, probably in 1999. I've had this thing for, for fucking ever. It's totally bulletproof. It is heavy. So um, I'd recommend getting a different poncho. The, the new USGI ones are, are pretty awesome. And if you're trying to save money, the Frog Togs ponchos are, are pretty great, super cheap and very, very waterproof. So yeah, a poncho. I've got my backpack here, a really small one with a pack cover and I've got a bivy sack. Um, so the, the pack cover is really simple. It's just, this is a tiny bag. It's not what I would carry on a, on a cross country trip, but Standard pack cover. This one's from Snug Pack, so it's olive drab. It's got a cinch, goes around the entire thing. And what I do, if, it, if I know I'm gonna be encountering a whole, whole hell of a lot of rain, is I put this on the pack and I put it turtle shell down. So it's on the ground or on the, on the steel of the car, uh, protected from water coming up. Top is exposed. And then I cover that with my poncho, wrap it up nice and good and make sure that the hood of the poncho isn't set so that water will get into it and then i'll get my ass into my bivy sack specifically to you know to sleep or or just to rest one of the problems you encounter is you get in your bivy and you want to get out because you got to take a leak or you want to hang out you know sit outside even in the rain and you're going to get wet transitioning from inside to putting on your rain gear you get back inside your bivy and you bring your rain gear in with you and you get everything wet. This kind of this kind of solves that problem. Um, so if you get in your bivy, it's raining on you. You're sleeping in here overnight. Rains all through the morning. You stay fairly dry inside your bivy and you want to get out and sit, but stay dry. So you're inside. And what I do is you just reach your hand out and you pull the poncho over you. And what I'll do is I'll pull the poncho over the hole in my bivy. I'll scoot up under the poncho and then sit on the backpack with my poncho on. And then I can roll the bivy up and make sure it doesn't blow around in the wind. I'll demonstrate right now, there's gonna be a whole lot of noise of all this nylon, but you'll it's really simple. You'll see. Inside. Pull my poncho over. I'm now inside the poncho. I keep it over top of my backpack. I scoot myself out of the bivy. I can keep my legs in the bivy if I want. And now I can sit in the pouring ass rain on top of my backpack and stay very, very dry. It's pretty awesome. If you need to get up and do something, if, you, if the train stops and you want to get off, you just roll up your, uh, your bivy. I wouldn't stuff it in my bag at this point. Um, put your pack on underneath the poncho and then uh, get off. Um, there you go. Very, very simple system. Take this thing off. Pat came off with it. There you go. Um, yeah, so for those of you 
we're going to be riding trains when the weather's kind of shitty. There's a very simple, low-tech solution to that problem. Um, yeah, other simple kit that I often carry. There's a lot of um, waterproof stuff sacks on the market. Some of them are quite expensive. Um, Marine Corps issues these. Pretty great. Got a valve here that's one way, so you stuff it, cinch everything up, push the air out, water won't get in, air won't get in. They're actually made by seal line. Um, they just have a contract with the Marine Corps, I believe. This was just all of, this was just green when I got it, and uh, a friend of mine had spray painted it before he gifted it to me, so it's a little bit more camo. But if you want to get a, a waterproof stuff sack, to, you know, put some of your kit in inside of your bag, uh, this is a, a more affordable option than the stuff you're going to find at a camping store. It's exactly the same thing. It's just the military version, and it also happens to be pretty good color. And you can spray paint it if you want, um, make it a little bit more camo, break up the silhouette of the thing. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of camouflage, big fan of not being seen. And in that department, um, the last summer I was out, I, uh, I took something with me that I'd always always kind of thought of doing and never bothered, which was uh, my own cloak of elven kind. I got this really cheap, very thin mesh camouflage bit of fabric. It's two yards, so it's long enough to cover a whole person and all their kit. Uh, the, the front side is cryptic camo, which is decent, and the back is just a coyote tan, which um, if you wrap your stuff up with this on the outside, it just looks like burlap. It just looks like trash. And it seems like it might be a bit of a silly thing to carry with you, but it's pretty damn amazing to be able to uh, quickly cover yourself or all your kit uh, to make a blind, because this thing is actually like, it kind of sticks to the bark of trees. You can just stick it to the bark and it'll stay up and have something to hide behind. You can see through, but no one can see you. Um, I did manage to hide in a couple yards where there was basically no cover vehicles and people went right past me and didn't see me. Um, in broad daylight. I just laid down and threw this on top of me like I was, uh, yeah, Sam and Frodo evading, uh, evading the Uruk Hai. Uh, this was cheap, found it on eBay, direct from the manufacturer. It's bootleg stuff, so um, I tell you where it actually came from. It came straight from China. Uh, there's some fancier stuff on the market. You can go to Cabela's and get a uh, duck hunting blind, anything that'll match the environment you think you'll be in. Um, I found this actually to be really handy when it was really, really sunny out passing through the desert. I just used it as a as a sunshade. I would hang out underneath this thing because you're on the back of a 53, back of a container car. You're just completely exposed. Um, I wouldn't recommend um, having much of your skin exposed out in, out in those conditions. If you look at uh, people that do migrant labor or guys that are up on roofs uh, installing solar panels or something in the desert, they're usually wearing like a sun hoodie, at least a very thin hoodie with the hood up, you're better off um, protecting your skin and being hot inside of your clothes and getting sunburned up and, um, and suffering that way. So uh, I would make myself like a little lean-to with this on the back of the train and um, hang out in the shade. It was really, really handy. Uh, yeah, rolls up to next to nothing. It's really fond of it. Um, might not be up your alley, but worth considering. So yeah, uh, look online or just go to Cabela's. Um, I've also, I've got a few patterns of this stuff. I bought some uh, finish, I think it's M05 camo from Verastaleka, straight from Finland, a few others, cause I'm kind of obsessed with camouflage. But yeah, um, consider having something with you to hide all your kit. This is my rain system. Um, I don't carry this whole situation with me all the time. If I'm doing like a short trip or if I'm trying to be really lightweight, I won't even carry the baby out. I'll, I'll just carry a poncho. Um, yeah, there you go. There's some ideas. Comments below if you have any more questions. I think I'm gonna do another one of these videos, maybe even this week, that's just gonna be stories, um, a lot of them mishaps and lessons learned from those situations. And this was, uh, these are from times when I, you know, I didn't have a cell phone. I wasn't documenting any of this stuff ages ago. Uh, riding trains and uh, sometimes shit happens uh, makes for cool stories at least I'll, I'll share that within the next week uh, like and subscribe much appreciated y'all take care